Welcome to the Services Marketing Assessment Update post facto review of the feedback experience and elements of the second assignment. So, what I'm going to start with is I want to talk about what went right. Now, a lot of the papers did really well, a lot of the papers did quite well, and there's a bunch of adequate and acceptable papers in there. Uh, the keys to the success. From my observation, the absolute key to the success was for every team who directly engaged the question I was asking, who didn't spend points on extraneous content, who went straight after the question gave a direct and blunt answer that was clear, precise, and directed to the key points of the question. Where some people went wrong is that you still felt you needed to put the extraneous. The people who put in executive summaries, the people who gave me extended details on the company rather than focusing laser focus on the product, the people who felt that they needed a bunch of context, despite the fact the case answers didn't require the context. To that end, what this means for you is that if you have thrown a bunch of material at the question, hoping some of it will stick, and you knew that was your strategy, you bet it didn't pay off. If you're looking at this going, but you have to have a, uh, how do you have a paper without an executive summary? It means that you're not engaging the question as it is. You're not engaging the task as it is. You're engaging your assumptions about how the task should be. You got to watch for that as a marketer because you got to go with what the market and the customer clearly states they want as opposed to what you assume could be best for them. So this is part of the challenge of why some of my assignments don't match up the ways in which other staff members do what they do. So direct engagement to the question, uh, hitting all the parts of the question, engaging all of the, the core components. Now, the task requirements of these two papers involved bringing the theory the equivalent of make it rain in academic terms. When people did it, and the most papers had one or two points where you did it well. So, so for the most part, and I'm going to put a casual figure on it, around 90% of the papers I marked had a point where you nailed it. You had it. You knew how to bring the reference, how to make the sequence of this is my interpretation of the idea, how it fits to the question, how integrated it to your answer, and acknowledging the point of origin of the ideas. So this approach, this uh, ability to take a conceptual idea and then bring it to the practice. So looking at all these theories you've studied and gone, actually they describe the world as it is, or the world as it could be. They describe the world. What part of the world are they describing that my case study operates in? There it is, I'm gonna go use that. So that's one of the things. For the third and final task, I am not making the reference-led approach mandatory. I am opening up the opportunities for people to go and tackle it in their own styles. But this is for the second paper. When it worked, it really worked. So people engaged that and I'm really grateful how many people took on the task and delivered. Now, one of the case in points of absolute points of success in the service critique Question four, where it says, what's an area of theory not in deployment that could do something new in the service? And people who went, 
looked at what they'd argued, looked at the evidence they'd used prior, and then pulled in either a complementary theory or a theory, like a clashing theory. But either way, it was a theory that they had not laid out prior in the paper. And if there was a secret to this particular question, this was it. What's an area theory not in deployment? What is something you haven't discussed yet that you could discuss now? This was also a, opening up the opportunity to people to be able to go in and use a favorite or a favored idea. So I know a lot of people are super keen on Serverscape and usually it got to run on the main paper or they're super keen on Servuction and got to run on the main. But there are a few people who clearly kept Servuction or Serverscape up the sleeve. It's like, I'm going to talk about a bunch of other theories. Then I'm going to say, not in deployment, Serverscape. Not in deployment, Servuction. Not in deployment, Servqual, not in deployment, and you played that card and you got the rewards because you showed me that you could look at the world as it is and see something new that you could do with one of the tools that you already had access to. Over in uh, new service, similar thing here in terms of when people did it right. Uh, it was around meeting the market demand. People would lay out the, what the product is, you tell me about the, the product is um, integration to services theory. And then you tell me who would be buying it and what they would be getting out of it. And it would click, it would make sense because you've laid out a customer base, you've shown what the product does in terms of potentially meeting needs. And then you either hit a co-production or a co-creation framework and showcased how your idea would be picked up, used, engaged, or adopted by your target market. Now, whilst things went right in many areas, there were points where things did not go as well as they could, and there were opportunities to improve. Top of the list, uh, one of the <sighs> one of the heartbreaking ways for me this time was when I had papers where I couldn't give out a block of grades, where there was no aspect of the question that I'd set appearing in the paper. And I tried my level best to check for reinterpretations, to check maybe I'd missed it, maybe that uh, despite the fact there were four clear criteria, someone had decided to write it as three separate criteria and one integrated platform across the whole, the whole essay. So there were more than a few occasions where I was simply unable to give out a block of marks because there was nothing in the paper that addressed that part of the question. And I'm going to say it was frustrating because quite often you'd have these great papers that were just missing a section. And it's like only being able to get, uh, in some cases, three of the four novels in the series, and it's novels one, three, and four. So let's, let's try and really make certain that on the, the final, on the exam, everyone nails the requirements. Everyone, no one misses or no one intentionally leaves out a section. Uh, so on the new product creation, sometimes this would be People would fail to describe their markets, but most of the times one of the members of the market limits would go missing. And the worst ones were when product would go missing, because the whole point of the paper was to tell me about a new product. It made it so much harder for me to grade your paper in a way that you got points. Similarly, over on um, the critique, the product would still be missing on quite a number of papers where it was like, what is it you're doing this assignment about? 
It's not the company, it's an offering from the company. That's what that's what we're looking for. So to that end, with an eye to the case study assessment task, please read the caref or read the question carefully. Make your answer direct, blunt, and clear. I am asking for a next step. Start your answer with the next step is, and then go and explain what and why. Uh, in terms of making it supported, like I'm not asking for super hyper referenced in this third and final task, but I'm asking for you to make your case. So when I say make it supported, I mean, tell me what you want to do and why that's a good idea. Persuade me rationalize your decisions, justify your decisions, give evidence from the case to show that this is a good idea and that I should be backing your idea. Give me something to work with. Uh, and the final thing on the, the points to do better, absolutely comprehensively has to be uh, attention to detail. Nobody lost marks in this marking round for things like spelling errors or syntax errors, poor formatting, misspelling my name. Nobody intentionally lost marks. That's the better way to put it. But I want to talk to you briefly about expectation perception theory and the principle of unforced errors in assignments. And a key thing here is that any marker who picks up an assignment and encounters unforced errors, be they text matching, badly written sentences, typos, misuse of words, any of that sort of thing encountered in the first page or the first half of the paper is going to set the marker on edge. We will start to feel doubt. And when doubt creeps in, doubt is toxic to marks. We want to feel confident in your ability. We want to feel that you have mastered your discipline, you have mastered your content, and what we are reading is a demonstration of that control of your skills. As soon as there are unforced errors in place, it gets really hard to feel that you've got the mastery, so you start losing your shot at the top of the grade bands. To make it to the HD and above, to make it into the uh, ultra, super, or high distinction, there cannot be doubt. We have to feel absolute confidence that you know what you're doing, you've got it under control, you understand the concepts and the frameworks. So cross-check, double-check, system check, get a fresh set of eyes on it, check. Make certain that, and again, this is in terms of for future tasks, future projects, wherever or whenever. Personally, I don't knock marks off for misuse of words because the dyslexic is not going to hold people to standards he is not capable of attaining. And as a result, I may not give you some of the, the edge that you need in other assessment tasks, but in particular, I'm just going to say, ensure always you're putting the best perception, the best evidence forward for us to have a really good perception of your quality of work. All right, the final thing that I wanted to address here is the return of grades. Uh, this was a complex task. Please ignore the timestamps on all of you who had submitted group assignments, uh, those of you who are the group members who did not submit, I've created in Turnitin a blank uh, grade report that allows me to place the marks on the marking criteria. It does not replicate the quick marks feedback and it does not rec replicate the audio feedback. For that, you're going to have to work with your teammate. Uh, each marked assignment should have a range of quick marks. Some will be in text, some will be at the top of the page. If you have no quick marks whatsoever, let me know something went wrong. 
You should also have an audio feedback file that talks to your assignment and is up to three minutes of me giving you guidance um, in a personalized version of a video like this or an audio file like this. Uh, the rubrics themselves show the breakup, how we split the different categories. And finally, on the uh, return of feedback, there is this video. Don't ask what time this has been produced. Don't ask what time um, the finalization took place. Because for some things, we're better off not discussing it or knowing. But ultimately, the final thing to say is for the third and final task. Go after the question. The question's already in play. The question, look at it. Look for what you think I'm going to go for. There should be a rubric in play when you open up the file. You're going to get one shot at submitting to Turnitin for a text match uh, because Turnitin only provides one text match every 24 hours. You may submit and resubmit to your heart's content to the due date. The question is live. The case study that you will use as evidence to support, uh, that you will use as your uh, foundation for your assignments, that will go live 9 o'clock on the Monday morning. The Turnitin system will open at midday so that there is a minimum three hour gap between the case being available and the first point of submission. And to that end, what I will ask is go after this with everything you got. Give it, give it your best shot. For, some, for any of you who have received consistency, upgrade consistency, this is your time to shine. Every person in this subject has had some point in one of their two assignments where there has been that spark, that sign that you are good and that you are capable of being the best. The title belt is on offer. The title belts have been awarded for the last assignment. Highest score takes the perfect. So I am laying down the gauntlet now to all of you who got upgrade consistency. The title shot is yours for the taking. You know what to do to be one of the best. So this is a personal challenge to you. Be that best version of you you can. It'll be a narrow window of opportunity, but it's a chance for you to throw everything you got, focus it on one shot, make it happen, and go for the top of the pack. Because you're capable of it, you're good enough to do it, and I want to see you deliver on that potential. So for the next task, Gauntlet's been uh, laid down, the challenge has been issued, be the best that you can, give me the best set of assignments I can hope to mark, and make it my problem to solve the bell curve, don't volunteer to be the lower tier, fight for the top of the pack, fight for that super high distinction, that ultra high distinction, give it all you got. I'm looking forward to marking what comes back from issuing a challenge like this. Good luck, good hunting. See you on the other side.